We recorded Lost Channels in the Thousand Islands region of uh, Ontario and upstate New York. And um, basically, there's a spot where Lake Ontario empties out into the St. Lawrence River that is, um, has thousands of islands scattered uh, in the river. And we decided to um, uh, collaborate with our friend Ian Korostein, um, who lives there, about finding some interesting acoustic spaces that are within those islands. And there's a lot of really interesting structures and um, buildings. And um, um, for example, we recorded in um, a castle called Singer Castle. Um, which was, you know, a, on an island, took up most of the, takes up most of the island. It's, 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 I mean, um, and then we recorded in the Brockville Arts Center, um, which is um, another old theater that's there, and also um, in a church uh, overlooking the St. Lawrence on a rock cliff um, uh, called uh, St. Brendan's, which is in Rockport, Ontario. What sort of wisdom and what kind of thought must there have been to scatter you? Initially it was just about the acoustic sound, you know. I was very interested in, in um, um, recording um, with a type of reverb that you couldn't get out of a box or out of a computer, you know. Um, I wanted it to be real reverb and, and also, you know, real people playing in a room, you know, instead of like an overdubbed and compressed sort of sound. Um, so it was important to me for it to have natural sounds, natural acoustics at first. Um, as I continued with it though, I realized that it was becoming a very big part of the creative process as well. The idea of um, going into a special place to record instead of, I mean, not that studios aren't special places in their own way, but I mean, certain structures and buildings have their own sort of energy and magic to them and um, we were really um, struck by some of the places that we found in the Thousand Islands and so I think it added a, a level of, of sort of reverence for what we were doing in a way, you know, that there wasn't, we didn't have unlimited time, we didn't have unlimited resources, we had to, you know, we really had to get it done within a certain time frame and um, uh, I think it just sort of f forced us to give our, um, our best towards the definitive take of the song. The line runs through like a train in a book. I had mostly written the album. There were a few songs, especially towards the end of the album, that um, were not as fully formed and I think you know, what, and I wrote sort of while being in the in the region. So, I think it definitely the, the influence of the region definitely found its way onto the record, in in the writing sense. <clears throat> I mean, it wasn't written conceptually for the region or in the region, but it was. Um, it it definitely was a good, I think, merge of ideas. I'm just pulling on a line, on a line. Oh, I'm just pulling on a line. I'm just. Pulling Sometimes it pulls on me. Over the years, I think we've 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 kind of found an audience here, and um, I think it's still growing too. And our music is such that um, you know people are still sort of finding out about it. And there's like this word of mouth thing happening that people want to tell their friends, and and uh, you know in a way people um, see our, our music as like their 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 own mm -hmm. secret or something, you know, and. Um, uh, and I think they're happy to share it with the with the people they care about. You know, I don't know if that makes any sense, but um, it seems to me that that's what's been the case. <laughs> 